Good morning, my neighbors! <laughs> Ladies and gents, it's Friday, it's blue skies, it's your dad's balls, it's time for an alternative paper review. First up to the Daily Mirror this morning, Tory betting scandal. What are the odds on that? This is the now well-documented story and ballooning scandal that a flurry of Tory insiders placed bets the day before Rishi Sunak publicly announced the date of the general election on websites like Betfair Politics and Paddy Power so they could reap the benefits, allegedly on the basis of insider knowledge. Now, I don't think it's possible to overemphasize just how damaging this is to a Conservative Party who are already down by about 25 points in the national polls. Firstly, because whenever this came out, I think it would have been a death sentence for them. This whole sort of, you know, the caricature of the Tories, big city fat cats, donors, insider trading. I already think it speaks to this idea that they are corrupt, that they're just in it for themselves, right? It would have been a death sentence whenever it happened, but the fact it's happening within the campaign proper is not ideal by a long shot. Then you've got Rishi Sunak's own personal approval rating, which is in the floor. He's about, he's about as popular as cot death. But now you've got this idea that his closest aides, his inner circle, his nearest and dearest, none of them are listening to him. None of them can be trusted with guarded information. None of them want to take orders from him. So what does that say about his ability to lead his party, his parliament, the country, if he can't even function as a fucking team leader? The third reason this is such an electoral death sentence for the Conservative Party is it's so accessible to the general public. Because quite often when we talk about Conservatives and corruption, those stories get quite complex quite quickly. You know, we're talking about illegal lobbying arrangements or bribery that's dressed up as speaking engagements, or people funneling money to their offshore accounts that are actually shell companies, and it gets drawn back down as dividends five years later. Like, it's quite difficult to wrap your head around some of that stuff. But this, this is just retail betting, isn't it? To not understand retail betting based on insider knowledge, you would have to be willfully ignorant, like deliberately trying to ignore it, looking the other way, or this guy. Yeah, well, it's like, well, they put a couple of bets on. Well, why are you making a big deal out of it? I, I put a bet on last week that you were going to look like a right prick. And now here you are with your camera and your microphone. So I win, don't I? You just want to make gambling illegal. You just try to take gambling away from us, don't you? You just want to stop the bets. I want to stop the boats. How's any of this going to stop the boats? They're still invading! <laughs> Now, you might think this might earn him a mauling from the same Fleet Street that used to bang on about John Major's affair and David Meller and Tory sleaze, but no, guys. Sunak vows to boot out Tories over poll betting. He's vowing to boot them out. Vowing to. He's not booted them out. He's just promising to do it at some point in the future. But are we really supposed to believe that he will boot these people out of the Conservative Party where Frank Hester said Diane Abbott makes him want to hate all black women and run out and shoot her. And as far as we know, he's still entitled to his weekly blowjob from Sunak at the Carlton Club now. Uh, 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 please, please don't say it again, Frank. I mean, it was it was hugely problematic. Of course, of course, there's a lot of problems. I've, I've told you this before, Rish. Uh, don't talk with your mouth full, yeah? <laughs> Also looking the other way and closing its cataract riddled eyes and presumably turning off its hearing aid to the betting scandal is the Daily Mail. Who lead with Kiss Starmer's response to a thing in the leadership debate last night. Again, he was pushed for his support for Jeremy Corbyn and his response was, well, at the time I felt like Corbyn would have made a better prime minister than Boris Johnson. Which, look guys, I am not a huge Corbyn fan, but don't the facts sort of speak for themselves here? I mean, first, any suggestion that Starmer himself is some sort of Corbynite Marxist is easily dismissible by the fact that he fired him! Second, I don't think from memory Corbyn's ever been reprimanded for lying to Parliament. He never attempted to disband the Standards Committee when his friend got into trouble. It wasn't Corbyn who hired a sex predator into the Whip's office. It wasn't Corbyn who had achieved an impressive reputation for lying or getting blowjobs in the Foreign Office. Would Corbyn have presided over things like the PPE 
scandal, the COVID death rate? Would he have done that populist shit and gone on TV and gone, oh, we'll, we'll send the virus packing in 12 weeks? Like, I don't suppose I'll win myself many new friends by saying this because some of you still love him to this day. But I don't think Corbyn was Jesus, not by a long shot. But do I think he would have made a better prime minister than Boris Johnson? Well... Couldn't have been much worse, could he? Still, as frustrating as it is to see the Mail and the Telegraph now wheel this out as some sort of attack line, it does afford us some amusement also. Because contrary to the opinions and beliefs of half of flag Twitter and indeed conservative titans of intellectual thought like Nadine Dorries, it wasn't backstabber Rishi Sunak or even Liz Truss who first hemorrhaged the Conservative Party, their popularity. It was Boris Johnson who took them from an 80-seat majority to a 12-point polling loss. In just over 12 months. That is all it took for everyone to be like, oh, actually, I don't know. <laughs> that is a falling out of love velocity normally reserved for what, like a Kardashian marriage or a child bride. So anyway, yes, back to the mail. Corbyn would have made a better PM than Boris Keir claims. And Starmer, Corbyn better than Johnson as PM, says the Telegraph. A line that, you know, if we think about it, it is statistically and historically backed up by Boris Johnson's performance as Prime Minister, but also backed up by current polling. Labour are and remain in the lead by about 20 to 25 points. Starmer is more popular than Rishi Sunak. Which makes this sort of front page actually quite funny to a sort of media junkie, you know, to a newspaper observer, because these newspapers are supposed to reflect public opinion. But again and again, they ignore Johnson's failures when he was serving as prime minister. They pretend that Starmer's Labour aren't doing actually incredibly well. You know, they live on another planet. The STEM newspapers, The Sun, The Telegraph, The Express, The Man. In fact, you know what? It's no wonder so many of them go betting with insider information. If they did it based on their political news, they'd never fucking win, would they? From your neck to your end calls, your black balls, screaming booze down the damn halls and crank calls. Reviews and those rants falls, my man brawls, your straw man, your ball games, it's your dad's balls. All day, every day, your boy's killing it, quick dealing the sick shit, straight killing it. Slick figure in politics, full of thrill of it, pillin' beer swilling, going ape on gorilla shit.